Hey, before the video starts, be sure to join my community Discord server linked below. You can hang out and chat with like-minded people and look for people to play with or just discuss mine in general. Yeah, we're back boys. The first two parts of this series have had a really good reception, so let's jump right into it with the third one. As always, if you have any more interesting facts that weren't in this or my other two videos, then be sure to leave them down below. Speaking of, if you haven't checked out the first two parts, then I'll link them down in the description. But without further ado, fact number one. For a huge amount of time in the game's history, Bastet's third ability, Declaw, was dealing magical instead of physical damage. It was like this for an unknown amount of time, but was fixed in patch 3.5 on March 29th, 2016 to actually deal physical damage. Fact number two. As of patch 5.24 on King Arthur, the total number of unique matchups in a 5v5 match with no duplicate gods on either team is 1.558 times 10 to the 13, or 15,579,278,510,800 combinations, which will only get larger every time a new god is added. To be clear, this is totally unique comps on both teams, as if it was ranked, no duplicate gods across teams. For the mathematicians among you, this was done using the formula for permutations with 99 gods and 10 samples, so feel free to explode my brain if I'm completely wrong with that. Fact number 3. The maximum possible protections you can achieve in Smite, as of recording this, is 1300 magical protections. You might be curious as to how this is actually done since the protections cap is 325 for each, but that's a soft cap meaning protection buffing abilities such as Achilles Radiant Glory, Fenrir's Ultimate, or in this case, Isis's Dispel Magic can bypass that cap, but items can't. So an Isis hitting 12 targets with her 3 buffs her magical protections by 360%, yielding 1300 protections in my tests. Any further targets than 12 with Isis 3 won't actually give any additional benefit though. Fact number 4. On Bakasura's original release, his ultimate, Regurgitate, would spawn the exact 6 minions he had eaten to stack it up. So it could spawn brute minions, the large tanky ones at the front of the wave, and also archer minions that use ranged attacks. Fact number 5. Way back in the closed beta version of Smite, Ares had an interesting bug involving his ultimate. He could cast the ultimate, have everyone use their beads or their ultimates, then pop his own Aegis amulet, which back then made you CC immune as well as damage immune, but prevented all movement. And then after using this old Aegis at the right time, it would cancel Ares' ultimate and not trigger the cooldown. So you could pop the ultimate, watch everyone use their beads, cancel it with the Aegis amulet, ult again and get a free 5 man pull. As you can imagine this was patched out at some point, because thank god this is still isn't a thing. <laughs> Fact number 6. If you hit Nem's shield now, it used to have unlimited health and would reflect and heal 100% of all damage taken for the duration. No surprise this was broken and frustrating as hell as she could literally walk into a Vulcan ult deliberately, full heal herself and do near a thousand damage to the Vulcan. Fact number 7. Ra's first ability, Celestial Beam, used to be able to hit multiple times in one beam on the same target. This seems like it wouldn't really be relevant, but if you had a fast dash or jump and tried to jump away, you could easily get hit twice by this for a huge amount of damage. Fact number 8. On Sol's original release, her two, Stellar Burst, could hit towers. Combining this with her passive that was even more broken on release than it is now, and she could literally take towers easily within 5 minutes, maybe even quicker. For those wanting a more in-depth look at how you can take towers in 2 minutes, I'll probably have a video covering Sol's release coming out soonish, so look out for that. Fact number 9. Bastet's original passive was called 9 lives, and gave her a massively reduced respawn timer for the first 9 deaths of her game. Not a crazy passive, but it does have pretty cool flavour. Fact number 10. As of recording this video, Anubis is the only god to have cooldowns that scale down as you rank up his abilities for all 4 of his abilities. Fact number 11. We all know Bacchus, right? Well, our boy Bacchus used to be called Dionysus in the game files before its release. For those less versed in mythology and lore, Dionysus was essentially the Greek counterpart of Bacchus, who is Roman. They're both deities of agriculture, wine, grapes, and fertility, though there are some differences between the two of them. These references to Dionysus in Bacchus' game files probably suggest that at some point Hyres had planned for Dionysus to be in the game, but he was eventually changed to Bacchus for release. It's thought that Dionysus was changed to become Bacchus later on, as a lot of Bacchus game files refer to him as Dionysus. Fact number 12. While a lot of you who main these gods or have been around for a long time will probably know this one, Kukulkan used to be Aokwang. He had identical abilities, but an entirely different model and personality. He was also in the Chinese pantheon instead of the Mayan pantheon. And some Wukong used to be Hunbats. Wukong's old abilities were given to Hunbats with a few minor changes, and Wukong himself was given an entirely new kit, which is the one he has today. Fact number 13. There were plenty of skins found in the early game files of Smite that never actually made it to release. A few of these include Cryptwalker Arachne, Shadow Bastet, and a Hell skin simply named Skin 2 Hell. These skins obviously look pretty bad because some of them are over 5 years old at this point. Fact number 14. If you hate Mercury now, you better thank Allah you weren't around in 2013. Unless you were, I guess. When his 2 gave not only immunity to slows, but also roots and, due to a bug at the time, cripples. 
Yeah, this ability used to give 70% attack speed, 10% movement speed, and immunity to three types of CC. Fact number 15. Loki currently holds the world record for longest time without a single balance change. He had a balance change to the post-hit delay of his decoy on January 29th, 2014, and he had to wait just over four years for the Season 5 patch notes, where once again his decoy was buffed slightly. I can kind of see why they are hesitant to buff Loki though, because he would just destroy the game if he was overpowered. <laughs> Fact number 16. Jesus was in Smite. Kinda. Harris had a portrait of Jesus appearing in various locations around the old Joust map for over two years. The community made a game of finding where Jesus had moved to for the next patch, as they moved him every few patches. Since the rework of the Joust map to the Chinese theme though, it no longer exists, or people haven't found it yet. Fact number 17. While Jesus might be gone from the new Joust map, our little noodle friend sure isn't. When Joust was remade into the Chinese theme, Hi-Rez added a statue in the Order Side spawn depicting Ao Kuang's original model before he was reworked and re-released as Kukulkan. Fact number 18. Using a certain combination of damage reduction effects, it is actually possible to get an auto attack that does one damage in a game. This requires Lono's Mask, Kepri Ultimate, Nox Ultimate, Upgraded Horrific Emblem, and Upgraded Phantom to pull off though. A combination of all these elements reducing someone's damage and bumping up enemy resistances makes this possible. Fact number 19. The Clash map has several statues dotted around it that, once all are hit, activate an easter egg in the map that lights up the pyramid. They can also be used to gain stacks on items, stack up passives like Poseidon's passive, and they also yield one whole structure damage when you hit them. So if you ever end a game of Clash and see someone has one structure damage, you know what went down. Honestly, this is pretty cool. It'd be awesome if they did have more of these little easter eggs around the other maps, as long as they don't impact gameplay too much, obviously. Fact number 20. Loki was originally intended to be a mage on release. Not much is actually known about how he would actually work as a mage and whether he would have the same kit just dealing magical damage, but he's probably just as annoying as Assassin Loki I would imagine. <laughs> he was probably intended to be something like Ao Kuang where he was still built like an assassin but did magical damage. Fact number 21. For those of you who haven't been around too long, there used to be consumable items called rituals that would provide insanely powerful effects such as an in-combat blink effect or a teleport to gods effects for a hefty price. They were one-time use, but you could buy as many as you wanted, and they kind of just broke the game and removed really quickly after they were added in. Harris have talked about adding them back in a less OP form though, so maybe in Season 6 we'll see the return of Rituals. Fact number 22. As of King Arthur's release, he is currently the god with the most damaging abilities to his name, having a total of 8 abilities that can all deal damage. It's also up for debate whether Kukulkan also has 8, but most people consider his 2 in both forms as the same ability that just activates automatically in his rage form. Therefore, King Arthur still holds the title for the most amount of damaging abilities on a single god. Also, it's kind of funny that the top two gods for most damaging abilities on a single god are both warriors. Just That's just typical warriors, isn't it? <laughs> Fact number 23. Currently, Najar's ring toss ability does reduce damage for each consecutive hit on the same target. This wasn't always the case on his original release, though. It did full damage on every single hit, allowing him to pretty much get a free double kill early in the game if he caught two people close to each other. Fact number 24. Raven currently holds the world record for the longest time being banned from Smite World Championship tournaments. He was released in the middle of Season 3, but he was reworked very close to the date of Season 3 Worlds, and thus was banned from being played because he was significantly reworked. It took another entire year until Season 4 Worlds rolled around for him to finally participate in a World Championship. And finally, fact number 25. Almost as interesting as it is useless, Rama holds the world record for the most voice lines in use for a single ability. His Rolling Assault ability, the Dash, has 31 unique voice lines that can play when you cast it. Who knows why they didn't leave some of them unused, but yeah, the more you know. Alright, I lied. One more bonus fact for y'all. Among a list of unreleased characters that was data mined in 2012 by the community, there are still a few gods that were seemingly planned back then but haven't been released yet. Those being Garuda, Chilin, Rakshasa, Set, and Shiva. Set has recently been announced to be coming in the next season, but these other suggested releases are still up in the air as to whether they're actually coming to the game or not. There were others data mined in this list, but they have since been added into the game, such as Medusa, Ares, or Freya. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you haven't seen the first ones, then be sure to check them out and let me know how many facts you knew from this one down below, and any others I didn't mention here, of course. Subscribe for all my other stuff and a potential part 4 to this series if I can gather up enough interesting facts. I do prefer to do a quality over quantity with these types of things, since a lot of like fact list videos out there are just stuff everyone knows already, so I do like trying to get some really unique facts in there, but if I can muster up enough, there will be a part 4 coming at some point. If you want to help support the channel in its future, then be sure to check out the Patreon page in the description if you want, and also join the community Discord server linked below as well, where we'll discuss Smite, Hangout, Meme Around, that sort of stuff, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out, you nerds.